Welcome to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. I'm your co-host, Pastor Moore. Always a pleasure to host you. It is a pleasure to, to be with you again today. Let's do our sponsors Let's while we're do here. It. Well, we have uh, Tomiko and Associates, uh, who's been with us for almost two years now. Then we have Lavinia Summers, uh, Home of Funerals, and uh, Marion County Public uh, Health Department is with us. Uh, they've been with us ever since we started some five years ago. Lee Kussel and Crawley has been with us. Not only that, Al's Modern uh, Clothing and Shoes. If you need to get decked out, go see Al. He'll make sure you're on point. Northside uh, Window and Gutter Cleaning. Then Fervent Care Christian Academy, His Place Eatery. Those are our sponsors. Excellent sponsors. And we certainly thank God for those of you who join us each week. We really do appreciate your support. Uh, we're excited about you. Also, please be sure to go to WHMB TV 40 on YouTube. You can watch this show after it's over, as well as others that you might have missed. And you can like us on Facebook. We're there waiting on you. <laughs> yeah, they're waiting on you. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting on you. <laughs> We've got a wonderful show for you on today. You're going to be tremendously blessed. Uh, our guest, uh, Eunice Trotter, is going to be joining us. And she's going to be sharing with us her book, Black in Indiana, which has already received numerous awards. Uh, numerous awards, and it's making its inroads throughout the country as well. Yeah, so stay with us. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. We're glad that you've returned, and we are happy to have Miss Eunice Trotter here today. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me, both of you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We are glad that you're here. Uh, the organization, as I understand it, that you represent is Finding Your Roots? Yes. It's, uh, it's actually a part of a movement uh, that we hope to take nationally. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be speaking with the National Humanities Council conference this, this fall. And uh, in finding your roots, we are encouraging African Americans to know who their people are. Uh, that is a big issue for us, uh, particularly nowadays. A lot of our people, particularly our young people, don't know their family. And when you know your family, there are all kinds of benefits. Uh, that come along with it. So for, for, for young people as well as older people, um, when you know who your family is, there's, for a child, lower levels of behavioral problems that, you know, transcend age and are evident even in your adult years. You, the behavioral problems are a big deal for a lot of our children now. They don't know who <clears> the dads <throat> are. They don't know the grandparents. Most African-American people cannot trace their family beyond the great-grandparent um, generation. Uh, so this is a part of a national movement that was started in Indianapolis by the Harrison Center. And the Harrison Center is uh, sponsoring me carrying that message and learning from the previous uh, events we've had where we help uh, African-American people know their people. We actually do the genealogy work for them on the spot at the event. The, uh, we've had two events. We're going to have the third one on June the 4th at the Black uh, Cultural Literature Center at the Marion County Library downtown. And we'll have 17 genealogists there from the Indiana African American <coughs> Genealogical Group mm -hmm. uh, and other organizations to help us uh, help people, you know, dig up who their, their people are. Now, is that the same as the oral history movement? That is a part of the oral history movement. This will be our largest event. Um, and it's, it's had a lot of great dividends. I've just heard over and over again from people who are just, uh, just overwhelmed by what these genealogists have been able to uncover about their own families. So, yeah, it's, it is part of that. It is the impetus for that. And um, you have an event coming up for Discovering Your Family Tree, June 4th? Yes, June the 4th. It's going to be from 2 until uh, 5 o'clock at the Public Library in the Black 
Culture and Literature Center there on, on the second level of the library. Is there a cost for that? No, it's free. Free parking, free, 99. free everything. Free, free, <laughs> free, free, free. 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 <clears throat> and, you know, this is such a valuable, uh, important service because to get your genealogical research done for you is very expensive because it's very time consuming. And, you know, the more and the further back you go, it gets more difficult. That's for just not African Americans, but for anybody. Um, so, yeah, but we're going to be doing it for free. And we'll spend probably half an hour with each person who's there. So, first come, first serve. And uh, in addition to doing the genealogical work, we're going to actually have instruction mm -hmm. sessions throughout that time, helping people, you know, find, learn how to find their families for themselves. How is that different from some of the online services where you they send you a kit and you give some DNA and then they send you back all this information about your your ancestry? Well, they don't find your people for you. They just tell you what your DNA is comprised of. And then they also go the next step and they match your DNA to others who have taken the test and they come up with a list of people who have possible uh, blood connections to you. Um, but your family members have to take the test in order to be able to be matched, you know, in those services. Uh, people like doing those tests, particularly African Americans, because it tells you, those tests tell you what part of Africa you come from, mm -hmm. be it, you know, Nigeria or, you know, ben, you know um, Sierra Leone or wherever in that continent you might have heritage or, you know, you might have originated. But it doesn't give you the names of people who don't take the test. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to take the test to be able to have it. For example, when I took mine, uh, my two grandsons came up in the top of the list because they were the closest blood, you know, relation that had taken the test. But it goes all the way down to like sixth and seventh cousins. But you'd have no way of knowing how they connect with you. Mm -hmm. It's just a name. And, and a lot of times, people who do these genealogy or DNA tests uh, don't even give their real names. They'll have initials or, you know, pseudonym names, you know, or, you know, you can't identify them from that test. So unless they give you their full names and even, you know, it allow you to access their family trees. And not a lot of people will do that. So you have to have a family tree to get that, those kind of matches. So if you don't have one on Ancestry.com or one of the other services, there's no way to match. How successful <clears throat> excuse me, is this as it relates to uh, the results bringing, being brought forth to families? What is, what, what is their response to? The, you know, in terms of what we do? Yes. Oh, boy. Um, the, er, the first part of last month uh, over at Scott United Methodist Church, we held one of these sessions. We had a full house, and all you could see was tears. I mean, people were crying, you know, like, oh, you discovered my great-great-grandmother, and they would be in tears. And uh, it, the response is just overwhelming for some people. Um, there are people who don't know maiden names of grandparents or great grandparents. We find all of that. Um, and I want to really get into why this is so important now. It is so important now that we, as African Americans particularly, um, know who our people are for, um, for many reasons, but one of them is the reparations movement. And as you may have seen in California, one of the requirements for people to get California's version of reparations is that you be able to trace your lineage back to slavery. Now, you may have heard that your great-great-great-grandfather was a slave, but do you have that piece of paper proving it? And so this is one reason to begin getting that work done now and to start doing the work. Another reason is because of our culture today. Um, so many people come from families with multiple uh, fathers, so you could have a family of five kids with five different fathers, and none of these children are taken on the father's name because the mother didn't marry them. So that child then carries that mother's maiden name, which makes all of those other lines lost, uh, because that child will carry that mother's name and may not know anything about that father's lines. That's half of your DNA, you know, 50% 50, 50 from each parent. You know, another reason is because of the change in how we record information. 
it, it used to be that um, anybody, anyone who died had an obituary in the paper for free. Nowadays, you don't get in the paper with your obituary unless you're paying $250 or whatever. Minimum. You know? At minimum, you're right. <clears throat> minimum. <laughs> so that leaves out a, a lot of families uh, being able to track their history through seeing obituaries. They don't include marriages like they used to and divorces. Remember, it used to be a list of all the people who got marriage license and all the people who had death certificates. Mm -hmm. None of that you find in the papers now. Well, the world is losing its intimacy. Definitely. When it comes to those particular situations. And yes. it's just a business now. Yeah. To where those uh, in bereavement would experience um, um, the, the comfort even from a newspaper obituary. Yes, well, like they used to say, yeah. if you can't be in the paper when you burn or when you die, when can you be in the paper, you know? But that it just doesn't happen anymore that way. Well, Paul, even, even our papers, uh, the Indianapolis Recorder does not publish obituaries without them being paid. Well, we'll pause there. We're mm -hmm. going to take a quick break. Okay. When we come back, we'll have more, and we'll delve into the book, Black in Indiana. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices, and we're joined by an author, and that's just uh, journalist. one of yeah. many things. Yeah. So thank you for your service to our community. Thank you. We really thank do appreciate you. it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Eunice Trotter and this book, Black in Indiana. Dr. Jackson, before she does that, she had some other things you wanted to add to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. do okay, that. Go ahead. But I wanted to be sure that people can see, that, see yeah. this. And it's got a barcode, so I'm assuming it's available on yes. Amazon. Yeah, and yeah, a lot of places. A lot now. of places. Mm -hmm. so you can get this book. Won't be able to cover all of it uh, here on the show, but at least you know what it looks like. And the author is here. Yeah. So you did want to add some uh, things into the importance of making sure that people know where they came from. Yes, yeah. Who they are. Yeah, when, when, when young people and older people know who, what their heritage is, who they are, um, they have more self-confidence. You know, they have a little bit more strut to their walk. They have some pride, uh, regardless of what that family background is. So you, we're all going to have, you know, some scoundrels in the family. <laughs> but we also have to understand that we come from a lineage of survivors and resiliency. And um, in, in um, doing research about the importance of knowing your family history, there were um, reports, studies done by, you know, people who major in doing these kind of studies. And they said that when, when, when we know who, what our family history is, what our genealogy is, in addition to the resiliency and the values that we then learn of our, our lineage, we all, the children, for example, um, develop an interest in history. Uh, you know, a lot of kids think history is boring, but when they can put their own people in si the Civil War, they see that there's a Civil War record for their great 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 grandfather, or when they can put their you know show the see the records of their family being in World War One or World War Two, it has a different meaning to them. They they see themselves and their own personal family in that. Um, you know, it gives, it gives kids an interest in their own background. Um, when kids, you know, learn about their own family tree, it helps them understand about where they get their characteristics, and also it helps them understand that the world does not revolve around them. They are just a link in a huge chain. And they know that they have, they fit in, they have a place, they are part of that lineage. So these are some of the good things, um, about, um, not just kids, but people, period, knowing their family history. And then I think one last reason why it's so important now is I learned that being um, a census enumerator uh, supervisor for the 2020 census uh, here in, in Indiana and in Georgia, I work both states, um, the, the quality of the census information collected for the 2020 census sucks. 
it, the, the census first was stopped early by the president, Trump at the time, some months early, which meant that we did not get to enumerate everybody. And we were given instruction that when nobody was home when an enumerator knocked, then you go to a neighbor and you ask that neighbor, uh, who do you think lives over there? And the neighbor might say, well, there's a man and a woman, so we put that down. Well, how old do you think they're, I don't know, 30, 40, 40, we pick a number, okay, 35. That kind of data collection, full of inaccuracies, is being considered the gospel for the census. For the next 10 years. For the next 10 years, for the next 10, what race are they? I don't know, are they Colombian, are they Mexican, are they, I don't know, who, you know, I don't know. So you guess. And that's the information quality that we're going to be working with in the future as we do our family trees. It's going to be unreliable and it's going to be, um, it's going to create what they call a brick wall, mm -hmm. which means it's something that you can't get through to find out who your family was, you know, in 20, 30, 40, 50. So that's, that is an important thing. But it's one thing for sure, you know yours. I uh, absolutely and know mine. <laughs> and being the author of this book, <laughs> which I've read, um, there's some interesting stuff in there about your family. Yeah, but you know what? The good thing is for all of our families is it's not just about our own families because we're so interconnected. For that book, uh, I was able to trace my family history back to an ancestor. She is my great-great-great-grandmother. Her name was Mary Bateman Clark. And she came to Indianapolis, uh, to Indiana, as a slave into Knox County, which is where Vincennes is located, and was brought there even though Indiana was supposed to be a free state, which it wasn't. In Indiana, we did a little dance around slavery, and we called it indentured servitude, which is confusing to people because in traditional indentured servitude, the person is paying for their passage into this country by doing labor for the person that brought them there. So usually after a couple, two or three years, that servitude contract is completed and that's it, they go on, they live up their lives. Well, for African Americans, there were some get arounds to the constitution of the state and even to the Indiana Territorial Ordinance which said there shall be neither slavery nor indentured servitude, which allowed the people who were the most empowered in the state the most elite, the richest, to have slaves who had to sign with an X their contract for 30, 60, 90 years of free labor. Mm -hmm. The only thing that these people were required to provide their servants was food and clothing, period, nothing else. And this is how slavery was continued in Indiana. And they were used no differently than the slaves of the South. They were doing, you know, crop raising and, you know, they were domestics. They were doing all the things that were, any other slave would be doing no matter where they came from. Well, Mary Bateman Clark, being one of them, was enslaved to a man who was a, who was a relative of William Henry Harrison. And William Henry Harrison, you all know, he was the first territorial governor and a whole bunch of other stuff. His grandson, Benjamin Harrison, as was he, a president of the United States with William uh, lasting only a few months because he caught pneumonia, giving a 45-hour speech in the rain. And so uh, his grandson, Benjamin Harrison, we have a big house there on Delaware, that's the Harrison's house, that was Benjamin Harrison's house. Um, and then he sold his contract, indenture contract, that he had on my great-great-great-grandmother to a man by the name of General Washington Johnson. Now, Johnston was the uh, founder, if you will, of masonry in Indiana. He bought the charter from Kentucky here to Indiana. So all the Masonic orders in Indiana come as a result of him bringing that charter. So he was this big shot. He was a judge, he was a lawyer, he was a state representative. Uh, on paper, he was anti-slavery, but he was a slaveholder. Um, she sued him, the, she lost the case in Vincennes Circuit Court. It went to the Indiana Supreme Court, she won it. And this became a book in case that uh, stopped slavery here in Indiana. Um, the other case being um, the Polly case, which stopped outright slavery. But, you know, the indentured servitude form was, you know, their, the roost for slavery. And so we have a marker now at the Knox County Courthouse recognizing this history. And, you know, we hope to, to do some other things with some other families, too, because there are a lot of important black families in the state 
who you never heard of. Came out of Knox County. Mm -hmm. Came out of Knox County. You know, Knox County used to be sort of the capital of the Midwest when it was part of the, Indi the, the old Northwest Territory. We learned about that in school, old Northwest Territory. Then it came, became the Indiana Territory. And so Knox County was still uh, at 1816 was the capital of the population, including the black population. It had the largest black population of anywhere. So a lot of black folks came out of that area and came out of the southern part of the state, moved north. And you know, the Wabash River runs right there between Illinois and that part of Indiana. And that's, it carried people north to places like Fort Wayne and you know, Terre Haute and so forth. We'll have to so, pause there. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have to have you back. Okay, all you right. Are, you are absolutely a wealth of wonderful information. Well, I, I try to be uh, at least a wealth of something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being with us. We gotta go, wow. Wonderful, wonderful. I've enjoyed it. We got to take a break and we'll be back with the rundown after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. Co-host, Pastor Wayne Moore. And your producer, Curtis Baker. Our sponsors, please. Sponsors, Tamiko and Associates, Lee Castle and Crowley, Lavinia Summers, <clears throat> Home of Funerals, Marion County Public Health Department, Al's Modern Clothing and Shoes, Northside Window and Gutter Cleaning, Fervent Care Christian Academy, and His Place Eatery. And, um... We thank God for our sponsors. Absolutely. And, and what a wonderful segment there with Eunice uh, Trotter and all the information she shared with us in learning about uh, who you are June 4th at the Marion County Library downtown. Yeah. You can get to know about your family tree and the way that they do that. Yeah. I think that's a phenomenal uh, to even know uh, about uh, those whom you didn't think existed on your tree. Uh, and it's, it's good to know. And it could change your whole perspective of how you look at life as well. Yeah. yeah. It could do that as well. Well, I'm definitely going to go. I mean, I can't wait to see the outcome. Uh, it's just something that, you know, you, you, <clears throat> I've been on Ancestry.com, and you find some things, and you can see a lot of loose ends, but I really want to know more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will definitely be at the Marion County Library on June the 4th, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Make sure you're there with us. And I think that's important. Uh, in Matthew 1, there's the genealogy of it Jesus is. Christ. Yeah. And I think it's important for us to all know who we, who we came from, who we are. And until next week, from all of us here at WHMB TV 40, we like you, we love you, you make us smile. Have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs>